So let's talk about exploring PowerShell objects. Now there's a couple of definitions that we need to work with here. So let's start with this. Let's run a get process commandlet. And I'm going to go ahead and pipe that to more just so it doesn't go scrolling off our screen so we can still see the header. Okay. Now, some definitions we need to set. First is an object. So each row in our little table here is going to be an object, even though it looks like a text table. In fact, it's output as a text table. But until it gets to that point, as it's working through the pipeline, each one of these is an object. Now, an object is going to be a single object, a single thing. So in this case, we did get process, so this is process. Each process is going to be an object. If we did get service, each service. If we did get a user, each user would be an object. So whatever we gather with the get, if we do a get event log, each event log entry is going to be an object. So each one of these things now is going to be an object. Now in addition to the object, each object is going to have properties. And here we're going to see a few of them. So we have handles, non-paged memory, paged memory, working set, CPU time, ID, process name. All of these are going to be properties of the object. So an object is a thing, in this case a process, a property is going to be a descriptive element about it. Now objects can also have methods, and a method is something you can invoke or do on that object. For example, a process object has a kill method, which you can use to kill the process. We actually won't do that. Uh, we'll typically stick with a PowerShell way of doing things, so we'll use the PowerShell stop process commandlet rather than using the method. We also have a collection. So if a single object is, in this case, a process, and we have properties on that object, and we have methods on that object, the entire group of objects together is called a collection. All right, so that sets some definitions for us. Now, let's take a look at some of these objects. So we can explore a PowerShell object using the command get member. The way it works is this. We'll do get process, we'll pipe that to get member. Now if you don't like to type that much, gm is a shortcut for get member. I'm going to go ahead and pipe that to more to put it one page at a time. Now what happens is we take the process, the get object, gets all of the processes, and then get member looks at the object and tells us what's associated with the object. So the first thing you want to see up here is the type name. So this is a system.diagnostics.process. That's the type of object that we have. Here's going to be the name of everything associated with it, and then the member type. Now we're going to have alias properties, we're going to have properties, we're going to have note properties, we may have script properties, there we go, we're going to have property sets. All right, for your purposes right now, a property is a property is a property is a property. Whether it's an alias property, a script property, a note property, uh, all of those things are things that the uh, PowerShell system is going to, I mean, it has to do with the way the property is generated. The PowerShell system is going to identify that for us, but we're going to use all properties exactly the same. And we're going to reference them over here by name, by the way. Now, when we did this, notice we also had methods and events along with all of our properties. And so this is how we'll find, find all of these things. Now, every object in the pipeline is going to have all of these properties all of these potential methods, all of these potential events will all be associated with each individual object in the pipeline. So if we were to do a get service and pipe that to get process, let me try that again. Pipe that to get member, that'll make way more sense. There we go. Oops. Pipe that to more. Now notice that we have system, system service process dot service controller, so it's a different type of object. Very important to notice the type of object. And it's going to have different properties, different methods, different events. And we'll explore every different type of object, whatever it is we're working with. Processes, services, users, event log entries, computers, whatever. Anything that we're working with, we can explore using get member. Let me do another one here. Let's do get date. And that's going to return the date for me. If I do get date and pipe that to get member, we're going to see 
more than will fit on the screen. We're going to see all of the different methods and properties that are associated with this particular uh, object. Now, this is how we can explore all of these. Now, notice when we do this, let me use date for this one because it's a great example. With get date, it just tells me Monday, January 18th, 2021 at 2.46 p.m. That's all it tells me. Now, I've got all of these other properties in here, right? all of these other methods, all these other things that are associated with the date and the time. Why doesn't it show it to me? Well, what happens is when you run a get command, PowerShell gets the object, pi passes it on down the pipeline, and then just before it gets output, which means displayed on the screen or whatever we do with it, just before it gets output, PowerShell has some formatting rules that are going to determine for this type of object display this information. Let's go back here. Let me do get process. So we know get process has tons and tons of properties, right? And we're going to display one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them here. There's actually about 67. PowerShell, well, Microsoft, has determined the ones that they think we're going to be most likely to look at. And so we take a uh, the PowerShell formatting takes and outputs those for us. Now we can get to all of the rest. We can use select object to pull up all of the other different um, properties. In fact, we're going to look at that in another video. For this video, I just wanted you to see that we can explore and discover what all of those are. And we can now begin working with those once we understand that these objects have all of these different properties. We can pull, manipulate, sort, do whatever we want to with all of these different properties once we know how to explore these PowerShell objects. So we've already talked in previous videos about git command and git help being great commandlets to explore PowerShell. Get member is the third big one. So remember git command helps us discover commands to do tasks. Get help uh, helps us learn how to work with those commands. Get member helps us learn how to work with those objects by discovering which objects or which properties are available for each of these different types of objects. So between these three, get command, get help, get member, we should be able to discover just about anything we need to from PowerShell.